Welcome, join Kyle, John and David as they go through what's on the playlist. Find out what's everyone's favourite at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. We have a few segments to be honest. In and out points, no celebs and the gossip. Back in time where we talk about the big M's coming attractions. What the cue? Quick checks. Who'll be laughing? You abundantly. Welcome to Jewel Redundancy. Yes, welcome to Do or Done See, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television, entertainment news, and summer movies with too many else with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... John Bergen, a third one is... Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am the summer box office to John's award season, to Dave's doldrums of january and february movies that just stink one after the next i don't know man it's yeah uh, that is usually the time when we get some of the, some really really stinkers uh, but there's been some ones this you know we got 80 for brady who could have forgot that in february uh cocaine mm. bear uh yeah i mean is that helping my case i don't know about these well films. i mean it's it's coming out on streaming i i want to check it out now i wasn't gonna go to, to the theater to watch it but mm. i will watch that uh, th- that's home. that's what people say about me i'll wait till <laughs> you know he's out of the theaters and is at home but all right let's break things down tonight yeah we're not talking about the winter movies. We're not talking about the awards movies. We're talking about the summer movies. It's our sixth annual uh, summer box office draft. I guess it's, is this still annual? Because we did, we did take two years off that 2020, 2021 COVID craziness. The world took it off. What what box office are we going to do? Exactly. So our sixth annual draft. And what we do tonight is each host is going to pick three movies that open wide wide release uh, in America between May 1st through the first day of fall. And then we add up the domestic totals between that period. So May 1st to Saturday, September 23rd, the first day of fall, we add up all that money, domestic only, no international numbers. You know, sometimes uh, you get a, a Warcraft that really kills it overseas. But it doesn't do do well here, but it's domestic totals. That's very important. Uh, and that date is important. Last year at that time, we all had a film in the top 10 making a few million each. So these these films could last throughout the entire summer. We've seen it happen. Uh, so, oh boy, here we go. Um, in order to figure out our draft order tonight, we use a very trusted, reliable source, only the best here at Door Done and See. <laughs> random.org uh, random.org I thought choose... you were going to say chat GPT I thought that's what... <laughs> that may play a role later tonight that's a little tease oh, that's no. a little tease random.org oh, no. uh, and that's going to choose our draft order and we're going to hold a snake draft so uh, it's going to be 1, 2, 3 3, 2, 1 and then 1, 2, 3 so it, it loops around there uh, so the first person doesn't you know get all three films you know and the third person doesn't get completely screwed so one two three three two one one two three we got to figure out this john and john has random.org up we can't show it uh at the risk of doxing him so we we have to put in the names and what we always do is we put the the order from last year the placement which was Oh, John. Okay, be careful with that. Uh, up. No, no IP yet. We're good. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think when you press that button, it'll show. Yes, us. Don't press the button. I'm not showing it on the screen. <laughs> okay. So Oops. the order. I think he just wanted to show us the order, Kyle, because he wants to rub oh, it yeah. in. Yes, John was number one. Oh, then it was Kyle, God. and the then it was me. In. So but, wait, your third? No, Dave? this is last year's. That's last year's numbers. Oh, okay. We yeah, got to hit this. random off of that. So, John, whenever you're ready. Hit random, and let's find out the draft order for this year. Ready, go. We have John David Kyle. And I have a screenshot for this you. Is, this is so fixed. Hey. I'll screenshot it for you and bring no, it in. I'm joking. I'm right pretty here. sure oh, last year, I'm sure, Bray, I'm pretty sure last year, Kyle, you got the first pick, and John got the third pick, and John ended up winning. So, and, and so anything could happen. Anything you know, could happen. I, I've also been in third where I chose all the right movies for third and there was no way I was coming out on top. So I've seen it work both ways. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, so John won last year. Both you and Kyle, uh, well, yeah, both John and Kyle have two wins. I, I have one, but I often get second. I'm always that middle middle person, usually, except for last year. But, all right, all right, we got our order. We got things figured out. John, hopefully you've had a minute to think about where you're going. And I'm actually kind of glad because I did actually not want the first pick, I think. Yeah, this is a tough one. And I know before we started tonight, Kyle felt very prepared. John is always super prepared. And meanwhile, I'm like, this is the least prepared I've ever been, I feel like. I feel like Mm. I don't feel confident in my picks. I have nine or ten films. I think I have the ten that are going to be the top ten. I don't know the order at all. I really, Mm. really am struggling with that. Mm. So John gets to rip the Band-Aid off. Uh, John, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Um, it paid off well for me last year. So I think I'm <laughs> going to stay in family and, and go out on a limb, even though historically they've been pretty good, but not the best. And I'm going to choose Mission Impossible. Oh, Reckoning. man. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. trailer when we went to see um, uh, Avatar. Man, I don't know if I've ever seen a trailer and be like, oh, yeah, I got to see that movie. Like I've seen a trailer and be like, oh, that looks cool. But I've never been in the trailer and been like, yeah, that I'm seeing I'm seeing that movie. Like that was a trailer, man. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that could be the reason this could be the top spot this year too. And Tom Cruise. It's Tom Cruise again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this has the biggest potential out of all the films. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I think this could be a huge, huge hit. Or it could be a Mission Impossible film yep. with a slight bump. And that's yeah. where I am. Yeah. I am it's um, a risk. I'm conf- like conflicted yeah. with this one. This is, I, I will say this is not in my top three. It was my number four, but it could be my third. Like this was. Wow. Because because let's just look at the numbers. I'm going to bore you with numbers tonight. Yeah. But the last one, the last one, Fallout, made $218 million. That was the top one of the franchise. So, and they've been going up. They're usually hitting around 200 in this new era. But then, you know, Top Gun Maverick was an anomaly. It was a, a, a freak show. It was 718 million domestic. Like, oh, is it like $500 million more than Fallout? This thing was huge. It was playing the whole summer. So, I think this will be big. I don't know if it's going to be Top Gun Maverick big. I don't I think- know either, but... I think I maybe know. 300 maybe i mean i mean the Pretty last solid, one though the last one did better than some of the previous iterations right and i mean i think it's only gone up each year yeah, yeah the, in this like new era of like the the four five six uh they've been going up but they all are around that 200 yeah like they, they're fair. so it's like 218 that, right. that's better but it's only 18 million better so there's definitely some upside with this pick. It's not going to streaming. Tom Cruise is at the helm. He's not letting this thing go to streaming. It's playing the summer. It is playing. The thing I'm worried about, there's two things I'm worried about. Slightly worried about the part one of it all. You know, sometimes mm. when you market the part one, it, oh, it's going to end on a cliffhanger. It's like people would be like, you know, the, the Deathly Hallows part one mm-hmm. was one of the lower box office ones compared to, obviously, part two, the finale. But... The main thing I'm worried about is we we talk about it a little bit tonight. It's going to be a big topic, I think, is the weekend. The weekend they pick because it is one weekend before the Oppenheimer Barbie doubleheader. Yeah. That's what worries me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like not that Barbie and Oppenheimer have like groups that it's playing towards, but I think more people in general are going to be like interested in Mission Impossible than any one group would be interested in Barbie or Oppenheimer. Like, I mean, I'm interested in all three. I'm probably going to see all three, but my gut, I feel like, especially after uh, Top Gun, is that if somebody says like, oh, you want to go see a movie, it's going to be either a toss-up or more likely they're probably going to choose Mr. Impossible, but Mm. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, the, the, the downside of with Oppenheimer specifically is the IMAX, the Dolby, all those like premium expensive screens because you know mission impossible is going to get it for whatever uh july 14th when it comes out but will they be able to hold on to them 
on July 21st Mm -hmm. when Oppenheimer comes out. You know, it's like, who do the theaters want to praise more, Tom Cruise or Christopher Nolan? Obviously, Cruise gave them quite a big bump last year. So maybe they're like, hey, we'll give you two weeks, Cruise. And Chris Nolan could wait a week before Mm -hmm. he can get the IMAX screens. But it's going to be like those two. I think it's just the timing of those two. It's like, I wish they spaced them out more. But Mm -hmm. all right. Uh, But it's still a great pick. I mean, it's still like it's it's a huge pick. I think it's a pretty solid pick. Yeah. Oh, boy. I don't know if I even want the next pick, to be honest. Um, oh, my God. No, I really am because I'll, I'll say it because I feel like I, I feel like I have to take it. But I don't know if I I don't know if, about this one this year, guys. I really don't. I'll just do it. I, I'll just take it. Uh, I got to go with the film that's coming out in like a week or two here. May 5th. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah, but, it's a no brainer. Yes, but also I don't know, like because it's a no-brainer, dude. I, I'm I might be overthinking it, but I think these I think Marvel the 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 bubble is starting to deflate a little bit. I think it's still going to make money, but I don't think it's going to be even the Doctor Strange level that we got last summer. I think. I don't think so either. Yeah, I mean, okay. Usually this May slot rules summer. You know, we got Infinity War, Endgame, Guardians two. You know, last year's Doctor Strange was number two in this spot. But ever since ever since my pick of Thor Love and Thunder last year, there's been like this downward trend that we've been seeing. Thor was just number five. Mm-hmm. Black Panther 2 came out like about half of what Black Panther 1 made. And then this year alone, 2023, Ant-Man 3 is just at 212 million. That's under the other Ant-Man films. Uh, but it's in the bottom I, eight of the Marvel films, you know, with the internals and the Thor Dark World. It's in that level. And then you're just seeing like this the DC, like Shazam Fury, the gods made 57 million. I think like people are a little like, is this enough out. of superheroes? Like I'll just yeah. wait for Disney Plus. Well, I think just looking at the numbers and based on what we're seeing, gar- every Gardens of the Galaxy before this has made over 300 million. Yeah. You're choosing this at the beginning of the summer box office That's month. True. So even if it does something like Ant-Man, you're reaping the rewards all throughout the summer. Yeah. Um if it could stick around that long. I think you've got with this movie if Ant-Man is making 212 million, I think this movie is more beloved than Ant-Man. And so I think you're looking at an easy 300 million at least. I think yeah. that's what you're getting. I I'd say I I'll put this number and we'll play it back in, in the fall. I'm thinking I can get 250. I might be able to get to 300. I guess. I, I'm, I'm thinking 300. If it if it really bangs, like people like it, I think you could possibly get 400. All right. I would love it. Give me 400. I'll take it. Please and thank you. <laughs> just, just $400, not 400 million. Yes. No, okay. But, uh, but man, I, I think... Uh, another thing, I mean, another Chris Pratt film right now is killing it at the box office. Mm-hmm. It's destroying everything in its past. Will people still want some Chris Pratt and Guardians of the Galaxy uh, come in like a week or two with how good Mario is doing? But all right, enough of me talking here. We got to jump to Kyle. Kyle, where are you going? You get two picks in a row, but what's your first pick? So I'm really interested uh, to see what you have, Dave, for your list because on mine... You guys had the first two. I thought those okay. were the clear, the okay. clear front runners on the summer box office, and then everything after it, you're looking at even upwards of two hundred million for yeah. the rest as like the 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 threshold. So right now, I have to think also three, four. I got to package some picks here. So, mm. um, so this isn't this is. I'm hoping I can at least get one because right now I have a a second and third pick in there. Okay. And and then uh, the other one, it's like, oh, that's where it gets a little dicey for me. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So where are you going? Uh, I think I am going to, um, I think it's going to build off of the good love that it had in the original. um, And it's animated. So I think it's going to bring out a bunch of people. But I'm going to go with uh, no, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. 
That's a good pick. I was going to say Paw Patrol's after the end of the thing, Kyle. <laughs> Paw Patrol, you can't yeah. choose that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm hoping that you know the goodwill towards the first movie, which I still haven't seen yet. Oh, that's good. Uh, and the uniqueness of of the story and the the um, the animation. I'm hoping that the sequel will do even better and that hopefully the fatigue won't relate to animated because they're doing something new and unique with it. So I think that I think I think at the bare minimum, I'm looking at a two hundred million dollar film at least. Yeah, that was my guess. My guess is is around two fifty, maybe maybe higher. I think we're at least getting like two two fifty because the original back in twenty eighteen made one hundred ninety million. And Mm. I think this one can only go up. It's only gotten more popular. Obviously, Spider-Man has gotten more popular. We saw the live action Mm. No Way Home. 814 million during omicron so like yeah. you know if we look at the last time there was a spider-man during the summer that was far from home that was another live action one that made 389 million domestic mm. so i definitely think you know yeah it, it, we're over 200 for sure um to do a, another recent comparison with superheroes uh incredibles incredibles one back in the day 261 million incredibles two 608 domestic so uh we could see if this thing clicks it really is gonna click Mm -hmm. um coming out june 2nd you know we got a good amount of time in the summer uh i think it's a good pick yeah it's a good pick Um, i'm hoping so but it it means nothing if this next pick doesn't go well because uh the ninth pick i am absolutely you're gonna get whatever's left stunk yeah so these are really the two movies for me. Okay. And uh, the question is, do I go with a risk or do I go with a, a uh, I think a slightly less risk, but uh, not as good reward um, possibly. So I'm thinking there's a high risk, high reward movie out there that's still left. And I think Dave, you're going to get it. Um, oh, now you're messing with my head. I think I am going to go with proven director and a proven track record on his movies uh i'm gonna go with oppenheimer interesting and um i'm nervous because it's right along up against barbie but i'm thinking i'm thinking that audiences you know i'm thinking people love chris nolan i tried to match it up against maybe what Dunkirk did. And I th- thought to myself, I'm still making a good 200 million, I think, with this film as well. That's what I think I'm making. And, you know, I, I don't think it goes lower than that, but I think the the upside isn't as good as another film that I had on my list. But, you know, I'm risk averse, man. It's, Come it's on, tough. Man. Um, so my numbers, I just did random guesses on a lot of them. And I, this might surprise you. I have Oppenheimer on my list, number nine. No way. I do. I do. No way. John, John I, you can't. Are, are you am I crazy? Nine? Mine was six. Whoa. I, I think All it's right. just the unknown. I think it's going to be a great movie. I think it's I, it's one I'm going to see. I'm, I that's one I'm think, paying for. I just don't think oh, the, the, the paying audience is going to be raring to go like they will other movies. Unfortunately, because I think it's going to yeah. be oh, a man. fantastic movie, but I, I think I'm just it, a little gun shy on on yeah. you know having people go out to see it. But um, I just thought I thought to myself because I like I saw Dunkirk's yeah. numbers and I thought if they're even similar, I mean it's still I I my guess my, I wrote my guess as like 180 200. That's still a great film. Yeah. I think I have just some other ones that more likely could get to 200 or more. And because, yeah. yeah, if you you look at Dunkirk, 189, Interstellar actually made 188 as well. So it's right the same. You can't yeah. count Tenet. That came out in the 2020s. Yeah. That only made 58 million. But the issue I'm having with this, and John kind of mentioned it too, I think it's going to be a great film. I don't know in the summertime, this kind of awardsy like mm-hmm. film with, I mean, I like Killian Murphy. I don't think he's a, a household name. Sure, there's a lot of other stars in this. Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Arby Downey mm. Jr. But on, on the poster, even though he's small on that poster there, he's not, you know, the, the A-list, you know, name. That's true. And then, and, and then you have 
another A list. It's going up against with with Barbie. It's that weekend, the yeah. Barbie Oppenheimer. I think Barbie yeah. has the edge with the families, plus the Mission Impossible the, of it all. Like yeah. here, here's it's, what it's, it's fighting for those screens with with yeah. the IMAX screens and the premium formats and. But the thing with me uh, with the Barbie is like, I I do think like I want to go see Barbie. I'm interested. Yeah. I'm intrigued. But if this thing is more meant for adults than it is kids, then I think it decreases its value. Does that make sense? So I don't know what the mm. audience is. I don't we talked think about this with the trailer. I don't I think don't people know. know that. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think people that's really know super until they, they get there and then they pay the ticket and then it's like, what? The, what is this? I mean, yeah. unless you watch that trailer, you would have no idea. I that, that trailer is pretty much the only reason why I was like, I went from ah, all right, I'll probably see it too. Yeah, I'm gonna see it because like, yeah, it shifts that dynamic a little bit, you know? Uh, yeah, I just I don't know if, and I mean this might be true, but if somebody hears about this and then the movie's like. Well, this isn't for my children. How dare they have some naughty jokes in there? It's going to be like, okay, the word's out that this isn't for like kids, really. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if yeah. it's just like that humor that's sneaky, like in the Disney movies or what or what we're looking at with that. That's That was my hesitation. Yeah. So, yeah. And Barbie hasn't even been chosen yet, so I don't yeah. know who's going to get it or not. So. And. Uh, this is like again all these films like outside of like guardians it's like okay i think that is the the chalk number one pick even though i feel hesitant about it i feel all these picks are in this like ether of like yeah yeah they're all in the top nine i just don't know where they are in the top yeah. nine and that's Place how i zero. feel about i have my second and third pick still on the board but i could have had these at six and seven like that's where yeah. i feel and no i i i feel you so I'm going to steal something I think John was probably going to take. So I'm going to try to steal it from him. <laughs> um, I'm just being petty at this point. All right. This one, it's hard to fully compare. It's an old franchise. It's been mm. around yeah, for a know. bit. <laughs> I already know you're choosing. But like, hey, there was an 80s blockbuster that did quite well last year when it returned. Let's go with it. Why not? It comes out right before July 4th, that big holiday weekend. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Let's go with Indiana Jones. Yeah. I am, again, torn on this pick because Mm -hmm. you look at the last time there was an Indiana Jones, 2008. It was the widely panned, at least for many folks, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It still made $317 domestic. Yeah. Yeah. And it it was just because, oh, it was the big triumphant return. Or like, I don't know, like, is it going to put a sour taste in pay, sour taste in people's mouth now? Or it's mm. like, oh, I didn't like the fourth one. I'm not checking out the fifth one. Or it's like, oh, they screwed up the fourth one, but they're going to bring it back in this fifth one. They got a new director, yeah. James Mangold. Um, obviously, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is uh, alongside him. We're going to de-age Harrison Ford and do some like old clips from the original. This could be the swan song for for Harrison Ford. It's indie, but like, will still people care? I, I don't know. It's, you know, it's it's right before the July 4th holiday. Uh, so that's good. But again, it's only a few weeks before that Mission Impossible Oppenheimer Barbie double triple header. So it's a, it's a crowded time. Uh, what do you think of this pick, John? Was this where maybe you were going? That was my next on my list. Yeah. I mean, I again, I feel like it's a little bit of a gamble just because of the history behind yeah. it. But I think it's it'll be okay, you know, in the long run. But I, uh, yeah, that was that was my my next one. So I, 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 you're on the same wavelength as I am for now. Yeah, I'm wondering because I mean, three seventeen million in 2008 is that? I don't think that was adjusted for inflation. So I mean, probably would be higher compared to now. But it's like, can I at least get three hundred from this one? Like yeah. maybe two fifty at the very least. So that's where I'm kind of. I'm hoping with Indiana Jones. Kyle, do you like the pick? I mean, I get it. It's always good to go with a sequel because it's like a there's a built-in franchise there. And we're talking about Indiana Jones here. A lot of people love it. It totally makes sense to me. I valued it lower. Um, but I think you could totally be right. I think it could be easily looking at $300 million. But, you know, uh, I also could see it go as low as like 200 or 250 yeah. you know? 
So I, I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a risk for you. I think you're still going to make a ton of money. And I think you, with your first two films, you gotta, you're looking at, you could be upwards if you get lucky of 800 million. I think that would be where you're looking at. I'm liking right this positive yeah. uh, reinforcement you're giving me, Kyle. I'm loving it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Let's manifest I'm saying it. if everything goes to plan, but the yeah. I just feel like this summer overall is yeah. just overly saturated. Oh, definitely. In the beginning. Definitely. Like in right. June and July, I think it's like so oversaturated. Yeah. All right. So, John, let's finish up this second round here. You get your second pick. Six yeah. overall. Where are you going? This is a tough one. Um, You took one of the two I meant to do. Um, hmm. I'm trying to find the image. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, I, I'm kind of in like, let me change this over. I'm like almost in, in gamble mode. Like I don't, yeah. I, I, from here on out, it kind of is up in the air. Um, I'm going to go for something I wouldn't normally choose and hope that, um, it pans out well for me. I'm going to choose, uh, elemental. Um, interesting. Uh, Pixar sometimes does well, sometimes doesn't. This one could be a weird one. It could not. I uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, like I said, it's getting uh, getting a little bit of a gamble on, but yes, yeah, um, yeah, that is a gamble. I I, yeah. I got some bad news when I surprised Kyle with uh yeah. with with nine for you know oh that was my pick you know for Oppenheimer yeah I have ten, 10 for Elemental yeah. <laughs> my my list actually shifted four times in the last like five minutes yeah. like they changed all over the place so. Um, I, I, it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sometimes these Pixar things are crazy yeah. knock out of the park. Definitely. Sometimes they're a little bit of a flop. Uh, hopefully this is, you know, the former and, uh, it makes some good cash, but, uh, don't know until it shows up, I guess. Yeah. You know what, you know, what's crazy and it, but it feels like a sequel to inside out. Yeah, and I don't know. Like you could have done that. Like the 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 poster, the way the characters look, it just feels very inside out. And yeah, I mean, she, could it looks very well similar to Joy there, and obviously yeah. uh, the the sad uh, emoji or or whatever it was in Inside Out. Yeah. Um, I I wrote that this could. I mean, this could connect, or it could really. I'm worried about it. And yeah. as as a fan of animation, as a fan of Pixar, I think it's in trouble um just because well i mean i'll talk about where it's placed it's opening the same weekend as the flash uh it's a couple weeks before the animated spider-man that um that uh that kyle took um you know it's in between that indiana jones time frame as well the biggest con i have for it is the disney plus of it all because during the pandemic they began releasing films on disney plus soul luca turning red and I think audience got really used to that idea that Pixar goes to Disney Plus. And we saw it last year with uh, the, the fiasco that was Lightyear, mm-hmm. where you have this like IP favorite. I mean, Toy Story always got bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, that fourth Toy Story film made $430 million domestic. Lightyear, you're thinking, okay, that's going to at least get, you know, in that 200, 300 range at that very least. It made 118 million. It's Pixar's lowest grossing film behind, I mean, behind films like Cars 3 and The Good Dinosaur. Like, it was a complete, just, and that was based on IP. This is a completely original idea. So, like, that's what I'm really worried about that, like, this could just not connect. But Mm. again, there's, you know, during the summer, families love animated films. So maybe, maybe this one will connect. And maybe just people weren't just interested in, in Lightyear and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll have to wait and see. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, let's just uh, do a well, quick... I feel like that's an interesting pick, and that's a cool one for the rest of the draft. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, so what we got now, we'll, we'll reset where everyone is before we go into the final round here. Uh, John has it up here for him. He has Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1, and Elemental. Meanwhile, I have Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, and then Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And then we go to Kyle. He has Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and Oppenheimer. We all have one pick left. John, seventh overall, your third and final pick. Where are you going? Again, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm 
a little bit in a corner and I think I changed my, my choice three times in the last two minutes. Like I queued <laughs> up the pictures and then I changed them. Um, yeah, I mean, we were, we were kind of saying earlier with, um, no, you know what? I want to change my choice again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. This is tough. This is tough. All right. Let me change it real quick. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't envy you in this position because I have it between no. two films. I'm really hoping you pick one and I can just yeah. have the decision made for me. These historically haven't been the best, but hopefully it is a okay enough to be a solid foundation for something else in my, in my, uh, choice to springboard off of. I'm going to choose fast X. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. They wow. historically have been just short of two. Yeah. Do you want to Yeah. Yeah, so, around there, you know, but... uh, I don't know. I, I was thinking of two or three other ones, and every time I thought of something, I was like, oh, I won't be good for a different reason, and I don't know. I, I'm not saying this is going to be great either, but uh, choices are... Uh, I'm feeling the pressure, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> You're going to force me to make this decision. Oh, I don't I want... Am. That's not <laughs> what I had. I, I had am. that as number eight. I'm sure list. one of the two is the one I just bounced off of. Uh, oh, my God. Well, Fast X, yeah, May 19th, it's coming out uh, a couple weeks after Guardians. And uh, I mean, so you have all of summer. But the it, the issue is, I think the box office has been trending down mm-hmm. on these films. Mm-hmm. The peak was Furious 7 back in 2015 with $353 million. But then Fast 8 was 226 Fast 9, 173 so I think I'm thinking, even though that this is being billed as like the final film, even though it's part one of a final two parter, mm-hmm. I'm 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 expecting somewhere close to the F9 number, maybe even a little lower, like a mm. 150, which is still like that's hey, that's nice, especially for your last pick, last film, yeah. But um, I'm hoping for a, a, a two, but we'll see. Yeah. I just think like Peacock has but, also been like really shortening their like release windows on films. And and also we had the whole debacle with yeah. the director leaving. So what is it? You know, this is uh, Vin's movie. This is. Yeah. Is, we'll see how he is as a writer director. at this yeah. point. <laughs> like, yeah. The drafts are getting too complicated mm. with release windows and all this stuff. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like I said, at this point. Especially not being super into, you know, uh, the the numbers and stuff behind movies most of the time. I kind of feel like I, I uh, it's all the same to me almost. So, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with my pick here. And I really didn't want to make this decision. I have between two. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now. Um, between the picks that I've been taking, the highest numbers I have on my board is pick number three and pick number six. So you're like, obviously, oh, pick number three, Dave. I don't know if I want number three. Yeah. <laughs> I might be, I might be going, I might be going chaos right now. Oh, I might do man. it. I'll tell I, you, fast was number nine for me. That's how far I bumped wow. down. I still have like seven and, and wow. five. And then, yeah. We're just but, like jumping around. We're just yeah. like <laughs> choosing films at this point. It's random. I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go chaos. I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm going number six on my pick. Um, I'll give I'll give Kyle maybe you know some openings if he wants it. Number six on my pick or on my board, which is the number eight overall pick. My number three really. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life's fantastic. Okay. All right. It's plastic or whatever. I don't know the words, but yeah, we're gonna go with Barbie. Okay, I think the upside in this film is crazy high. That's where I'm I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping for. I am. It's a crowded time. I'm going against uh, John's Mission Impossible and your Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to base this off. There's no. I mean, yeah. Because all the other films are sequels and franchises. This yeah. is its own thing. It's based on IP, obviously. But like, is it gonna pl- uh, play like a like a, a toy movie, like a Transformers, like an early Transformers film, or is it gonna be like a the the Dungeons film. and Dragons that we saw this year. Like, is it going to play with families? But it's PG-13. Like, this yeah. could go any which way. But I think, like, the internet really, like, loves this movie. And I'm hoping that translates it. Like, I hope people our age wants to see it, you know, and those memes and the posters. It's like, okay, I'm going to go see this film because of that. You got families going because, oh, it's Barbie. I, you know, Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, the cast. 
I think there's a lot of positives here. Greta Gerwig, hopefully, you know, with with her behind the script and director's chair, that it's going to just be a good film and get good reviews. So that's what I'm hoping for. Again, this was a a last minute switcheroo pick. But uh, John, you think it's okay? I you know what? That was what I swapped off of. And I think I regret swapping off of it now. Oh, boy. But oh boy. You know what? That's the game, man. That's the game. I mean, I thought it would be taken much higher because I thought the it's definitely risky because of all the things that Dave mentioned. But I think the reward could be really high. But like you said, on my list, I just have a bunch of question marks next to it, next to it because of all the things you mentioned. Dave. I have no idea what yeah. could happen with this movie. I really don't. Yeah. So, oh, boy. Uh, a, I, I don't want to keep thinking about it uh, Kyle let's go to your last pick uh, the last pick of the night where are you going pick number 9 see everything that I have left I think it's going to make about the same amount of money mm. so I don't think it really matters which is crazy that you have something at 3 that I'm still I'm not even sure it's going to make that much money that's why I think I went with six, because I, I think the data is telling me it's making money, but my gut is saying it's not making money. And I think, uh, you know, I want to go with, I'll, t- I'll tell you what I, I, I'm not going to go with, I don't think. So I'm not going to go with Transformers because I think it's on its way out, but yeah. it always seems to make $150 million, somewhere yeah. in there. That was my eleven. Right after Elemental, I'll tell you that. I'm not going to go with The Little Mermaid because I just think unfairly to the film, it has some controversy around it and that's unfair to the movie. And Mm -hmm. I think it could still be good. I just, I don't, you know, Disney with those, um, those films, those uh, live action films have been like iffy. So with that being said, I really only have one left on my list. Which is... And I don't know how the hell they're going to market this thing. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea how they're going to market it, but I see it around. I just don't know how they're going to do it with the star that they have. And we're going to go with the Flash. You're entering the speed force. Here we go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how this is going to work out. I think this could be a total disaster. But at number nine, what do I have to, yeah. what do I have to lose? Yeah, I have the Flash at... That was my seven. So in between uh, Barbie. What do and, you have at number three, so dude? We'll get to it. We'll talk about it in like honorable mentions. Um, it was the one. Well, I'll just, I'll just tell you now. This is all over the podcasting today. This was my top nine. And then we will get to the flash because we got a lot to talk about with that. My okay. my nine in order were Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. Number three was The Little Mermaid. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Four was Mission Impossible, five was Spider-Man, six was Barbie, seven The Flash, eight Fast X, and nine Oppenheimer. So, but, going back to my, to, yeah. like, to, you can say it and then I'll go on. No, I, I, it's enough about me and my list. We got to hear about this number nine pick, The Flash. Okay, so I was just going to say, just to justify the pick is like, um, I do think that there is uh, superhero fatigue but I also think The Flash is one of those characters that a lot of people love. Uh, there was a CW show. It's very popular amongst kids. So I wouldn't be surprised if this does, you know, well. Mm. But again, it's like they really have to believe in this movie in order to put it out there with what has happened with this dude. I mean, there's yeah. no there's no way else to put it. So. Yeah. If they're banking on it so much, it makes me believe that at least they have been marketing it because I've been seeing it all over the place. So there's got to be some money to be made there, I swear. Yeah, they are hyping this film up. I saw some stuff. I mean, a lot of these folks are biased because they're involved with the film. But James Gunn is, is saying it's one of the greatest superhero films ever made. Ben Affleck, who's in the film, said that movie's really good and it's my best S word that I've done as Batman Tom Cruise even loved it. And he said, it's everything you want in a movie. So they're saying it's good. People Mm. are stoked for Michael Keaton returning as Batman and the multiverse of it all. Yeah. But then you have the Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller of it all. Like, it's going to be so hard to promote 
And who knows if they will get in trouble again? Like, but then again, is that all too inside baseball for most of America? Do they even know that uh, they have gotten into trouble before? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. And like this thing could play like a DC recent film like Shazam 2 with 57 million total. Black Adam, 168 million. Or it could be an Aquaman with 335. Like it could be there's two ends of this thing. I don't know where it's going. It, it's a really but as a number nine overall pick, I think it's a it's a good pick because the, the ceiling could be high on this one. Yeah. And it does have some time between, I think, the next big film, which is Mission Impossible. Yeah. If I saw the schedule right. So I would have a couple of weeks to kind of cook for a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, looking at like some of the list here, um, I picked Barbie, which opens at the same time as Oppenheimer, same weekend. Yeah. Kyle, you picked The Flash, which right now opens the same day as John's Elemental. Yep. So we have a lot of ones competing on the same weekends as each other, which is mm-hmm. going to be very interesting. Uh, oh, boy. But yeah, so that is The Flash. And I think we can talk about The Little Mermaid of it all because, yeah, that was my number three. And wow. I was I was comparing it to 2019. I was comparing it to what we saw from Disney in the live action films that year. There was four films that they released. They had, I'll give you the ones that didn't play as well. Dumbo, 114 million. Mm -hmm. Maleficent, about the same, 113 million. But the ones that connected that year, the last time really we had these live action ones in theaters before COVID. Aladdin with 355 million and Lion King with 548 or 543 million. So a while ago, it was a while ago, but like, I feel like it's in that Aladdin, Lion King, era of animation of how big those you know like animated films were in the 90s you know less so than like dumbo and cruella and in the in those films like that so i'm like okay it could be more in that 300 range possibly i don't think it's going to hit like aladdin did with 355 but could it be 250 could it be 300 it is on memorial day weekend which is mixed because yeah it used to be kind of cursed for disney i mean the four day to- for totals. This is four days instead of the normal three days. Uh, Solo was only 130, 103 million for that opening weekend. Pirates 4, 78. Alice Through the Looking Glass, 33. But then Aladdin was in 2019 and killed that weekend. So mm-hmm. that's where it's in. As you mentioned, Kyle, there's this is unfortunate controversy surrounding the film, and that's which is annoying. But it's just like, so that's where I was like, when I was going between the two, I'm like, Right now, the internet doesn't seem to like that film, but then they're really loving Barbie. So it's like, oh, is the goodwill with Barbie? Should I go with that instead of Little Mermaid? So that's what kind of like drove yeah. me at the end there. Yeah. No, I get it. Uh, but the Little Mermaid is a huge property. I oh, mean, that's what, that's what else you have going for it. So, yeah, I, you're right. I mean, this has the potential to make a lot of money, uh, but yeah, I just... Uh, was worried about memorial day weekend the whole controversy surrounding it um yeah it's just a shame but but yeah i don't know this could be interesting i mean the picks we had were interesting this this time around i feel like a lot of stuff we know could go wrong yeah yeah so um before we get to our honorable mentions uh, i'm going to run down what we have so far uh go through all three here we got John, he picked Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, Elemental, and Fast X. Meanwhile, I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and Barbie. And then Kyle, you have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Oppenheimer, and The Flash. You guys really made me nervous about the Oppenheimer pick. I just, uh, you guys are more down on it. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, down oh, on man. it, money wise. I'm excited to see it. I'm down on it though. Oh, man. Yeah, I think it's gonna be one of those ones that just does okay, if that, you know. So, yeah. Mm. So the the winner is among us, but it may not be one of the three of us. And I'll say that because, unbeknownst oh, to Kyle, uh, we have one more contender going <laughs> oh, in here. God. And I asked. Google's AI chatbot Bard, and I have his or his or her—I don't know—Bard's three picks, 
And I don't know if John has them quite ready yet. We're crunching some data. Yeah, so while we're going to talk about honorable mentions, um, I am going to just leave that there. We're going to let, wh what is Bard going to pick as their three picks that they're going to make the most money this summer? Maybe, maybe they will win. I, I will say I'm giving them free range, you know, because it's not fair, you know, after we pick nine films that they pick up the scraps. They get any three films they want this summer. So we're battling the computer, basically. We're battling the computer. Okay. All right. So, John, they're in Discord. Well, yep. you're figuring that out. I'm ready to go. Oh, you're ready to go. You have them. I'm ready to go. All right. Let's see what Bard picked. All right. In <laughs> first, first pick, it shows Spider-Man Across the Universe. It's second pick, it shows The Little Mermaid. Mm. And the third pick it shows was Fast X. Oh, wow. I don't have any of those. I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it went wow. with Kyle's first pick uh, with Spider-Man. It went with John's, I guess, last wow. pick there, yeah. Fast X. And then it went with Barbie, which went, or not Barbie, um, Little Mermaid, mm -hmm. which was undrafted. So, wow. wow. Okay. It really is like a separate contender right now. It really could be. Yeah. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have to figure out, you know, who's going to win. We're going to calculate the, the totals, the domestic totals, until September 23rd. And we'll have a winner between the four of us. Okay. If the AI uh, wins, we have to quit, right? <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but before we get there, though, we have a few more minutes. We're going to talk about some, like, honorable mentions, some, some summer movies that are coming out that aren't going to really be players uh, when it comes to the box office. Maybe they're streaming picks. But um, start me off, Kyle. Do you have any honorable mentions of films that you're excited to watch this summer? Uh, maybe excited to watch. Maybe I just want to kind of see how they turn out kind of thing. Um, uh, Gran Turismo, just because mm -hmm. I always loved uh, the game when I was growing up. It has David Harbour, uh, Orlando Bloom. Um, I've only seen a sneak peek. I haven't seen much of it. Uh, it scares, scares me. Because the video game movies can always turn to junk, but I'm like, what can go wrong with cars? You know, what, you know, <laughs> but uh, so that interests me. I'm not going to say I'm going to go out and see it first night, though. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I mentioned this on the the uh, the other podcast, which I'm blanking on the name. Sorry. Good, bad and watchable. Good, bad and watchable. Uh, the Machine, which is with a comedian I like, Burt Kreischer. It's like his most infamous uh sketch or skit or bit that he's done and he made a movie out of it so that'll be interesting um i am actually very interested in this movie and i want to go see it in theaters to support movies like this even if it stinks uh rated r comedy no hard feelings with uh jennifer lawrence um your life story isn't it Pretty much, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll run down it because this is actually on my list too. It's it's just because of the concept, and we're not seeing films like this in theaters anymore. But it's from the writer behind Bad Teacher and the director of Good Boys, and it's Jennifer Lawrence, in it, which seemingly is like an early two thousands comedy about an Uber driver who faces bankruptcy, accepts a Craigslist posting to get a Buick Regal from two parents looking for someone to date. Their clueless son. So uh, it's an R-rated comedy from Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, yeah. what, I mean, okay, Oscar winner Jennifer Lawrence. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the last one I have, I'm not really interested. I'm interested to see how it turns out. Um, but I don't really have any desire to watch it. Um, is a new adaptation of White Men Can't Jump with, hmm. uh, I forget the... Uh, uh, one guy but the one is jack harlow and i'm like jack oh harlow. man we're giving jack harlow acting <laughs> material but whatever interested to see how that turns out not necessarily interested to see how uh to watch it that's for sure but those are what comes to mind okay you got some good films there uh john anything that you're looking forward to that we haven't talked about tonight <laughs> no i i gotta say my my big three i think are gonna be uh top gun Oppenheimer and Top Indiana Gun. Jones. Not Top Gun, uh, Mission Impossible. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I got good news for you, buddy. It's already streaming. <laughs> Whoa! No, uh, Mission Impossible. Um, now I want to say Top Gun again. 
uh, yeah. uh, Indiana Jones and Oppenheimer, I think, are the yeah. big three I want to see. And we kind of pretty much discussed all those already. Uh, there are other things that I probably will see, like Barbie and a couple other ones. But again, uh, the um, the Mission Impossible, it just that that trailer, man, I I can't I can't express how much it mm. it grabbed me. Yeah. Like I, I usually yeah. am not a trailer person, but that oof. it played before Top Gun Maverick. So I mean, that's uh, I didn't even see it before Top Gun Maverick. Oh, I saw it before it? Avatar. Okay. Oh yeah, maybe it was before Avatar. Yeah. There was, I think definitely something played before Top Gun Maverick though. They were for, in the airplane, for, in the yeah. biplane. He was like walking around or on the on like the bi on the biplane wing or something, talking to the camera. No, oh, yeah. yeah, no, it was the motorcycle trailer is the one specifically I'm I'm thinking about where he jumps the motorcycle. It's just like holy cow. Yeah. So I got a few I'll run through. Um just interesting ones, maybe ones I might not even end up seeing, but I just thought they're in interesting premises. Um we got Fool's Paradise, which is on May 12th. It's Charlie Day's directorial debut. He also wrote it. And he plays a mute man from a mental health facility that looks just like a method actor who refuses to leave his trailer. And I just think it's interesting because, you know, Charlie has such like an iconic voice. And it's like he's choosing to kind of go silent and be a physical comedian here. Uh, and it has like an old school Hollywood vibe. There's a big cast of like... Ray Liotta, Common, Jason Sudeikis, Adrian Brody, John Malkovich, Jason Bateman. Ray Liotta? Yeah. He, he's still in it? I, I mean, guess. I thought his last film was... Cocaine Bear? No, I guess he has another one <laughs> coming up. But it's like you just don't see a film like this, I feel like, for theaters, especially in the, like, the summer season, some kind of, you know, arty, you know, movie. Like, normally it's like a big blockbuster sequel. But uh, yeah. so this is an interesting pick. Um, there's Asteroid City, which is a Wes Anderson film. With again, mm. a lot of Hollywood involved. Scarlett yeah, Johansson, Tom Hanks, Tilda Swinton, mm -hmm. Brian Cranston, Adrian Brody again, Steve Carell, Margot Robbie, many, many, many other people. So it's like, okay. I, I honestly don't know how I feel about Wes Anderson. He could be I hit think. or miss for me. Yeah. There's times where I yeah. think it works, and then there's other times I don't want it at all. Yeah. But uh, it's always interesting. He's always doing something, and it always looks beautiful. Mm. Um, and then I'll just mention two more. I got Flame and Hot. I mentioned it on the Good Band Watchable, based on the true story of the Frito Lay janitor who claimed to have invented the snack Flamin' Hot Cheetos. It's coming mm. to Hulu, so I mean I don't have to go to the theaters to, to check out Flamin' Hot. And then what I'm really interested in just seeing how it's gonna work is the Please Don't Destroy film. It's gonna be uh, coming out in August. It's about three childhood friends who set off to find gold treasure rumored to be buried on a nearby mountain. And I'm just curious because these are the, the the three guys who have been doing all the SNL digital shorts recently. And I, I like watching their shorts, but they are shorts. So, like, is this, sure, you know, Hot Rod and Pop Star and all that stuff mm -hmm. came out of the Lonely Island. But can their kind of manic energy, the quick cuts, all that stuff translate to a 90 minute feature that's in theaters I don't know. I'm just really curious of, to see how this uh, kind of turns out. So mm. that's just one I'm kind of thinking about watching. And what it, does that? What that's streaming a, service? Well, I don't. I think that's a, a theaters film. That's August wow. 18th. Um, yeah, yeah, it's August from Universal. Universal and uh, Apatow Productions. So yeah, August looks really uh, yeah. slim for movies that month. Yeah, I don't think we picked a single film from August for the draft. No, it looked um, bad. Looks so, bad, bad, bad. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, no Meg 2, the trench. Okay. Uh, you're going to, I thought I was, <laughs> when I saw the name of that movie, uh, I thought to myself, they've already made a sequel for that Megan movie that <laughs> just came out recently. <laughs> it came like, out in January. Yeah. And they're yeah. already back at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then and you got like the September. I mean, we could have picked a film in September, even though, you know, it's it's not summer, quote unquote. But The Equalizer 3, The Nun 2, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, they're really going all in on the sequels oh, yeah. in those two weeks. And isn't there like The Expendables? Yeah, Expendables 4. Yeah. Oh, boy. But none of those were picked. We got our nine picks. We got Bard's three picks. Oh, boy. Who's going to come out on top? We'll find out in September when we calculate everything. But that is it for our annual summer box office draft. And we've been doing every other week the past few weeks, but actually we're gonna be coming back next Monday, Monday, May 1st for a big episode. We got a lot to do. We got a mid-season check on Barry's final season. We have a movie review of Bo is Afraid. 
the new Ari Aster film. And then we we painfully say goodbye to our uh, friend and colleague and mentor, James Corden, in The Late Late Show. He's going to be saying goodbye, heading back off to uh, that the mouse humping uh, yard in the sky. Uh, he's running over by a car if he's not careful. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful doing those crosswalk musicals. But um, yeah, we're going to break it all down next week, May 1st. And May really does have a bunch. So make sure you are you're tuned and ready to go. You know, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the blog, com. We have so much going on. We have new shows like White House Plumbers. We have Pete Davidson's Bupkis. We have Class of 2009. We have the returns of the other two. And I think you should leave. Plus, the series finales of Succession, Barry, and possibly Ted Lasso. So a lot to do in May. It's a big month. So make sure you're ready to go. We're going to be back May 1st on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Dewardency. And you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok at Dewardency. I got to thank both of you guys for joining me tonight, for drafting these films, for John doing so much live direction tonight, making all those graphics on the spot here, for directing it, putting it up on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube. I couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you so much. You? Yeah, man. But that is it. Until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm Jumper. And I'm Cobberger. And that's all we got for Dewar Duncy. Goodbye, everybody. John, delete all this audio. <laughs> <laughs>